Hello and welcome to Insight of Thalmology. This is Dr. Amrit welcoming you to part 3 of the corneal topography and tomography series. Today we are studying how to read the corneal tomography in very easy steps. So without any delay, let's get started. This is the typical pentacam printout of uh, the corneal tomography in which we can see certain columns over here and we can see four maps which are presented in a typical printout of pentacam. In my part 2 of corneal topography and tomography, I have explained about these maps and their uh, basics in very detail and I would advise all the viewers to visit that video first before entering into the part 3. So let us start one by one and see what this printout consists of. The first uh, thing that we see in a printout that can be seen over here is the patient information and the details of the patient, which consists of the patient's name, patient ID, date of birth, age, exam date, eye, time and exam information if any. So this is very important for patient identification and moreover for comparison with the normal database, especially the age factor. So date of birth is very important because the pentacam or the machine would be actually comparing it with the age related controls and other normative data. Next, what we have is the quality specification. The quality specification will tell us about the quality of the scan and it is written as QS. Okay, so you can see over here in the next column that is present below the patient data column is here there's a one thing which is called QS which is nothing but the quality specification and if QS is okay, you can proceed with the scan and uh, sometimes there would be results like the data gaps written fix or model and it means that the scan is not of good quality and you need to repeat the scan. The third thing that we should see is the keratometry readings and the curvature map. So in this we can see over here only we have the K1, K2 and this box which was consisting of the quality specification also consists of the keratometry readings. So let us see what all should we see in the keratometry readings. We have a K1 and we have a K2. So the K1 basically represents the central 3 mm zone of the flat meridian. So the keratometric value of the flat meridian is called the K1 and the steeper meridian is actually the K2. And over here, we are seeing the central 3 mm or zone of the cornea. When you uh, take out the mean of K1 and K2, what we get is Km. So Km is nothing but it is the mean of the K1 and K2. Then we have another reading which is called the K maximum. The maximum keratoconic uh, reading of the anterior corneal surface is represented as K max. And also, and this K max should always be less than 47. And to be exact, it should be less than 47.2. Okay, so uh, whenever this K max goes beyond 47 to 50, it becomes moderate risk of keratoconus or ectasia. And whenever it is more than 50, it is definitely a very high risk of keratoconus or corneal ectasia. So K max becomes a very important uh, factor, which is the maximum keratometric reading of the anterior corneal surface. Then we have the Q value. The Q value will talk about the, sphericity, uh, the sphericity of the anterior surface of the cornea. Now we all know that the cornea is not a perfect sphere. However, it is a sphere in such a way that the central part of the cornea is more steeper compared to the peripheries which are actually flatter. Okay, And this is the normal cornea and the normal cornea has Q value of about 0 to minus 1. Okay, so the normal cornea is prolate shape and prolate shape means that it is steeper in the center and flatter in the periphery with the Q value of 0 to minus 1. Now, when the value is more than 0, it means that the cornea is now somewhat flatter. So what I mean to say by more than 0 is that now the Q value will go above that is plus 1, plus 2, plus 3 like that. Okay, so it will become more positive. And as it becomes more positive, it means it is more than zero and it means it's an oblate sphere now. Okay, so from prolate, the cornea has changed into the oblate cornea and this occurs usually after refractive surgery that is LASIK in which we are going to make the prolate cornea into an oblate cornea that means a flatter cornea. 
Now, sometimes the Q values can be less than minus one. So what I mean by less than minus one is that it is going to go in the opposite direction. That is minus two, minus three, minus four like that. And it means that the cornea is hyperprolate. Hyperprolate is that the steepness of the cornea is now increasing more and such is seen in corneal ectasia. So anything above zero that is in the upward direction and anything below minus one is abnormal, specifically below minus minus one is abnormal because it indicates corneal ectasia. So over here we can see this is a quality specification and just below the quality specification we have a Q value and the Q value will be given like this and uh, over here is the normal sphere and whenever the central part is more spherical and the peripheries are flatter it is called a prolate shape and the oblate shape is when the central is flat and the readings will be more than zero. Next, uh, we have the anterior curvature map. So in my part two, I have explained to you how, what is the importance of anterior curvature map, what are the normal shapes and abnormal shapes on the anterior curvature map, which can be read from the part two of my video. So the first map that you see over here is actually the anterior curvature map. And I'm talking about the anterior curvature map because just now we have talked about the K1, K2, K max, and therefore it is better to uh, read the anterior curvature curvature map at the same time because it also represents the anterior corneal curvature or in the diop in the diopters so uh, there are certain high risk and moderate risk which are associated with the anterior corneal curvature maps which i have told you in my part two so all the special shapes if you see and uh, are high risk shapes and whenever the skew shapes are present the skewed radial axis of greater than 22 degrees are high risk and central shapes with the k-max of more than 50 diopters is definitely a high risk of ectasia however coming to the moderate risk asymmetrical shapes in which the inferior superior difference is more than 1.5 diopters is moderate risk whereas the central symmetrical shapes in which the k-max is 47 to 50 diopters is the moderate shape is the moderate risk next we have the topographic versus manifest astigmatism since we are talking all about the k1 k2 let us also talk about the difference in k1 and k2 which is nothing but astigmatism so when we are considering k1 k2 and finding out the difference based on the topography it is called topographic astigmatism since we are considering the readings present on topography and the real astigmatism which is present in the patient which we find out using our refraction that is maybe through using the uh, AR autorefractometer or by subjective refraction or by doing a retinoscopy that is called the manifest astigmatism that is what is exactly present in the patient. So the difference between the topographic and the manifest astigmatism should be less than or equal to one diopter. Similarly the axis that we find on topography which is written over here and the axis that we find uh, on the clinical refraction the difference between them should be less than or equal to 15 degrees anything above that will be uh, suspicious and would serve as a moderate risk of ectasia so now let us talk about the elevation maps right so just now uh, we read about the and uh, these maps which are present the anterior sagittal curvature map and the k1 k2 axis uh, qs value and the q value on the topography now let us talk about the elevation maps which are the anterior elevation map and then we have the posterior elevation maps so these are nothing but the corneal curvature maps based on a certain reference uh, shape that shape could be a best fit sphere or it could be a best fit toric ellipsoid now again i would uh, refer you to my part two on topography for detailed explanation on these elevation maps so in this elevation maps as the curvature maps they are color coded so whenever you have a green color it means that the reference level and the corneal curvature they are both same and therefore you get a zero difference and there is no risk at all however when you get a red zone Zone. red zone means that the cornea is more elevated compared to the reference plane and therefore this difference indicates that there is elevation and this is called high positive elevation which is risky that means the cornea is steeper than our reference plane 
sometimes you will get a blue zone blue zone means that the cornea is actually flatter compared to the reference zone and therefore it is its level is actually below that of the reference zone and this is called low negative elevation or depression and this is represented in the blue colors so you can see over here this is the elevation map these are the blue colors it means that the cornea over here is not as uh, is actually flatter compared to our reference and therefore it is coming in the uh, colder colors that is the blue and the greens whereas wherever there is a red part it means the cornea is more steeper compared to the reference and that is the elevation maps so the elevation on the anterior surface and elevation on the posterior surface that means you have to study the anterior elevation map and the posterior elevation map now the elevation on the anterior elevation uh, map normally it should be about plus 12 okay so whenever it becomes plus 13 to plus 15 it is suspicious and more than 15 is definitely a risky case similarly on the posterior uh, elevation map from 15 you can take it to about 20 is more risky and 17 is normal and anything in between is suspicious now one more thing that we do is we find out the difference between the front and the back elevation and that should be usually less than 5 microns there should not be much difference in the elevation on the anterior and on the posterior elevation map so these points are important remember anterior elevation map more than 50 is risky and posterior elevation map more than 20 elevation is risky then one more thing that we see on the elevation map is we are going to find out a location of the thinnest point on the pachymetry map and find out the corresponding elevation of that thinnest point on the elevation map. Now in the case of myopia, the anterior elevation map, this point should be less than 8 and the posterior elevation map, this point should be less than 80. However, in hyperopes, we take it as 7 and 28. So this thinnest point elevation on the elevation map, if it is more than 18 and uh, 28 on the posterior elevation map and more than 8 and 7 in the anterior elevation map in myopics and hyperopics respectively, it is a risky case. Now, just how I mentioned in my part 2 of the corneal topography and tomography about the balance embroccio enhanced ectasia display also called the bad map or the bad display. So what happens in early keratoconus or what happens in the best fit sphere is that we will take the averages of the corneal curvature and calculate our reference best fit sphere. However, in a patient who has keratoconus, the, and the part of the cone will also be included in the calculation of the best fit sphere and will give us a higher reference plane and therefore the difference between the corneal uh, the real cornea and the reference will be less and we might actually miss the early keratoconus so to prevent that we have an, a new reference shape calculation or an enhanced reference shape calculation in which the central uh, steeper part of the cornea where it wherever the steeper part of the cornea is present around that a 4 mm zone will be excluded for calculation of the best fit sphere and such a sphere which is calculated without uh, the central steeper part is called the enhanced best fit sphere and the maps that we got, uh, get are called the exclusion elevation maps okay so that is the concept of the bad display or the balance ambrosio enhanced ectasia display because we are enhancing the best fit sphere and getting the elevation map in such a way that even the minor keratoconus are now becoming more obvious to our eyes then we have to uh, calculate the difference between the standard elevation map and the exclusion elevation map and you're going to get certain maps like this so in these maps again if you get a green zone it's a good one yellow is in middle and red one is severe dangerous so red one you can remember more than seven to nine microns is the difference and less than five micrometer is green which is a good difference so less than five micrometer good six to seven is yellow intermediate and seven to nine is definitely red in color and these red zones are very very risky zones and it tells you that the patient might have ectasia now after the elevation map now let us talk about the four type of maps which are called the corneal thickness map which are present like this over here and based on these corneal thickness map we have certain calculations present in this table like here and these calculations are related to the corneal 
thickness. So let us see what are those points in this third column. So these are the pupillary center pachymetry, the pachy apex and the thinnest location and the K max. Okay. So let us see what it is. Coming to the pachymetry values. Number one is the pachy apex. That is the apex of the pachymetry. So what I mean to say by pachy apex is that it is the thickness of the cornea at the apex or the center of the cornea. So if you calculate the thickness at the center of the cornea, it is called pachy apex. However, if you calculate the thickness of the cornea at the center of the pupil, that is called pupil center pachy or the thickness of the cornea at the pupillary center. Now it is very important to uh, get this point registered in your minds that the pachy apex and the pupil center is not same. That means the center of cornea is not same to as is not same as the pupillary center. Okay, and therefore we have two terms: one is pachy apex and the pupillary center. Now, for the purpose of all the calculations of any point, we take the pachy apex as the reference point. That means the pachy apex will be taken as zero level, and from this we are going to calculate the coordinates of any point. So if you want to calculate coordinate of point A on the cornea, we are calculating it from the pachy apex, okay, and not from the pupillary center, right? Now, next one important point on the pachymetry or the thickness map is a thinnest location. This thinnest location is very important on the pachymetry. That means the point on the pachymetry map or on the cornea, which is the thinnest, okay, which has the thinnest Thick, uh, which has the least thickness on the pachymetry. Its location is important and how much is the thickness is also important. Now, what did I tell you that pachy apex is taken as the reference? And the X and Y mm, these coordinates that you're seeing, all of these are actually from the pachy apex. So you can see this pupillary center, the thickness at the pupillary center is 491. And X means that it is very close horizontally from the pachy apex. However, it is displaced vertically to about 0.34. Now, plus sign indicates that it is above the pachy apex and minus means it is below. Similarly, if you see a plus point here of the thinnest location, it means it's on the right hand side and minus means that it is on the left hand side. So this is how you get the coordinates with reference to the pachy apex. Now, the thinnest point is very, very important. Suppose this is the cornea, this is the corneal thickness map and on this you have to find the Thick, uh, the thinnest point location and thickness. The thickness at the thinnest point should always be more than 470 to uh, 470 microns. Okay, so anything below 470 microns will always be risky and it will actually be a high risk case and there is a high suspicion of keratoconus or corneal ectasia. 470 to 500 is moderate risk whereas 470 and less than that is high risk. Similarly, you have to find out the thinnest point location. Where is it located with reference to the pachy apex? Okay, and it is actually the vertical displacement, not the horizontal, which is more important for us. So if this is the thinnest point and this is the pachy apex, you have to find out what is the vertical displacement. If this vertical displacement is um, usually if it is more than 0.5 millimeters, so minus indicates that there is an inferior uh, inferior displacement and uh, it should always be less than 0 0.5. If it is more than 0 0.5, it means that there is a high risk of keratoconus or corneal ectasia. So remember, it is the inferior and it is the vertical inferior displacement of more than minus 0 0.5 mm of the thinnest location. So this is written as TLY. Okay, in the Y coordinate, what is the displacement? If the displacement is more than 0 0.5, it is risky. Now, one more thing is just the profiles. How do how does these thickness maps look? Uh, based on that, also you can pick up certain uh, diseases and corneal ectasia. Like over here, the entire corneal thickness map is looking reddish in color. That means there's a global thinness, and this is seen in keratoglobus. Similarly, over here, you can see the inferior part is thinned, and this is called a bell-shaped curve. And this bell-shaped curve, uh, the bell shape 
map is actually seen in pellucid marginal degeneration so whenever you see certain uh, shapes like this this is definitely a risky uh, keratometry uh, risky thickness or pachymetry map on the tomogram similarly you calculate the difference between the inferior and superior points symmetrically and this difference on pachymetry should be less than 30 microns it should not be more than 30 microns for it to be normal if it is more than 30 microns then definitely it's a risky business so based on that high risk is definitely more than 1.5 mm of displacement minus uh, 0 0.5 to 1 is you can take moderate risk and thinnest location thickness 470 to 500 is moderate whereas less than 470 microns is a high risk case after this as you can see this is the bad display which i told you so this is the normal uh, elevation maps these are the exclusion elevation maps and finally the difference between them and in this case you can see it is normal now based on thickness we have these two uh, uh, graphs which you can see over here let me tell you what are these graphs so these graphs are nothing but they are something which are telling you about the thickness profile so when you're studying the change or the progression of the thickness starting right from the thinnest location to the corneal periphery so if this was our cornea and here was the thinnest location how is the thickness progressing from this point to the periphery is called the corneal thickness spatial profile study which comes under the bad display only so under this corneal thickness profile we have actually two types the first one is the corneal thickness spatial profile which is called the ctsp and based on this spatial thickness profile uh, we have another percentage thickness profile which is called the percentage pti right so in both these cases, you can see three dotted lines the central one is uh, the normal one and then there are two standard deviations above and below right so the lower one is two standard deviation below that and the upper one is two standard deviation above that right and the red line is actually the test line which will tell you about the about the testing cornea or the cornea being tested now if the um, if the cornea is actually normal it is going to follow the curvature of the central line or the above line or the lower line so that is a normal cornea any deviation from this path of the three dotted lines is actually abnormal so you can see in this case over here you can see that this is the red zone and definitely it means that the corneal thinness uh, there is corneal thinning and there might be a risk of ectasia so have a look at this picture i'm so sorry it's not very clear but over here this is the central part and you can see in this lower lower picture on the percentage uh, thickness uh, graph you can see the red line is actually dipping over here much before the six so this is zero two four and six so much before the six point six unit comes it is actually dipping down and it is progress is called fast progression on the corneal thickness profile and it actually is a risk of keratoconus or risk of corneal ectasia that means that means this is a rapid slope and a fast progression of the corneal thinning now similarly on the percentage thickness uh, increase which is nothing but the percentage of progression on the corneal thickness spatial profile so if this was our corneal thickness spatial profile okay and so uh, what happened this is 0 2 4 uh, 6 and 8 uh, millimeters of the cornea so if you calculate this this is from the thinnest point and then here is a 2 mm zone 4 mm zone and 5 mm 6 mm zone 8 mm zone like that so if the cornea uh, thickness is actually dipping much before the 6 mm zone that's a very high risk uh, feature of the uh, ectasia or the keratoconus so this you can see this is normal because it is following the central dotted point over here the percent thickness increase however just look at it it is actually below these three dotted lines and much before the 6 mm zone it is dipping and therefore it is definitely risky now there are a lot of shapes that we can find on the corneal thickness uh, spatial profile so we have a quick slope quick slope as i told you before reaching the 6 mm zone itself the red line is going to leave that passage of dotted lines s shape is also abnormal in which initially it is going to follow the path of dotted lines and then it's going to come down that is also abnormal and then sometimes we can get an inverted shape in the upward direction and uh, uh, that could be seen in pellucid marginal degeneration then sometimes we get a flat shape so flat shape is like it does not dip but it is more flatter compared to the normal also 
and this flat shape is seen in edematous cornea especially in fuchs dystrophy and gutte etc whenever it is present so sometimes however uh, it might be very difficult to differentiate the flat cornea and uh, uh, this uh, to to tell whether it is really edematous and that time you can take advantage of the skyme flux imaging which is present on the pentacam so there will be hyper reflectivity as seen over here and along with that there will be a densitometry function which is present in the uh, pentacam in that densitometry function or densitometry graph you are going to see a second green uh, hump like this so this second green hump which is present here is called the camel sign and this is seen in corneal edema due to fuchs and similar uh, so on confirmation you can see that there are gutte which are present on the specular now last point that you should see is the inter eye symmetry in topography so based on each of these points 1 2 3 4 5 there are five points so based on each of these you are going to give one one point each if it is present so mean anterior keratometry difference between the left eye and the right eye if it is more than 0.1 day 0.3 diopters you give one point if the mean posterior keratometry is more than 0.1 you give another one point if the thinnest pachymetry difference is more than 12, you give another one point and front elevation at the thinnest location more than 2 microns and back elevation at the thinnest location more than 5 microns, you will give one one point each. So normally uh, in, a p in patients, the score of less than 3 is normal. If you find a score of 4, that means on adding these points, if you're getting a 4, it means that it is abnormal, almost about moderate risk because a score of 4 is found only in about 4% of the normal population. However, a score of 5 is found only in 1% or less of the normal population. So it means that score of 5 is definitely a risky business and score of 4 is about moderate and 3 is normal. So this table over here actually summarizes the high risk and the moderate risk. So total astigmatism more than 2 oblique astigmatism more than 1.5 is risky then a uh, difference in the topographic and the manifest astigmatism of more than 1 as I told you is risky thinnest location pachymetry less than 470 is high risk 470 to 500 is moderate the location of the thinnest lo uh, point on the y coordinate okay 0 0.5 to 1 is moderate and more than 1 is definitely risky q value of more than uh, minus 1 is risky because it indicates a hyperprolate cornea similarly on the anterior sagittal curvature map if you see certain abnormal special shapes they are risky k max more than 50 risky skewed radial axis more than 22 is risky however moderate risk you have the inferior superior asymmetry of 1.5 and sometimes uh, people say that in the superior patterns that is like superior steep or asymmetrical bow tie in which the superior one is more steep in that the, the is difference is taken to be more than 2.5 similarly the k max 47 to 50 is moderate risk on elevation considering the best fit sphere 8 and 18 posterior elevation in the myopic and 7 and 28 in case of posterior elevation and anterior elevation in hyperopic thickness map dome shape map bell shape map globus maps are very risky high risk and superior inferior difference of more than 30 microns is moderate risk thickness profile a quick a quick slope that means a slope before six millimeter zone or inverted one is a high risk one and a slope which is coming after six is a moderate risk intri asymmetry of four and more that is five is risky and 3 is almost normal, 4 can be considered as the moderate risk. So why is this risk, uh, calculating these risks are important is that whenever there is even one high risk present or two moderate risks which are present on tomography, it's a contraindication for refractive surgery. Whereas if there is only one moderate risk present, you can still go for surface ablation procedures like PRK, they can be done. However, LASIK cannot be done. So this was a comprehensive video on corneal topography and tomography. If you stayed with us till the end, congratulations. And I hope that was useful for you. Thank you and have a nice day.